Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, hope you've had a good week. Hope you've really had a good week. It's been uh, it's been quite difficult for some people. Um, the ups and downs, eh? and uh, especially with too much <laughs> expectations from these uh, New Year's resolutions that we make. <laughs> yeah. So, some people made a resolution that you know by the end of January, I want to have uh, so many thousands, you know, so many thousands of dollars and yeah you know things didn't really work out and now yeah working on a new working on a new plan eh? working on a new plan to move forward eh? yeah on my telegram group i shared some trading plans for the year uh, 2022 yeah so yeah so some people have been following them but others you know you know plan dictates that you should make a certain amount of money every week eh? And then you see that, you know, you can make a lot more. You know, every time you start following this, it seems, um, you know, it seems like you can do a lot more than what is on the plan. Eh? And, you know, you go for that, you know, that big, uh, you know, that bigger cake. Eh? You go for that bigger share of the cake. So, uh, yeah. So I show plans group. Uh, if you're not part of it, you can search for my name. Without a space, eh? Makune Marcelino, just search for that name on Telegram, eh? then uh, you know it will lead you to that group. Eh? Uh, so uh, I shared some, I shared some, uh, some trading plans there to cover the whole year. You know, to show you that if you make a certain amount of money every week for the whole year, you'll have uh, you know so much money at the end of the year. And you know this excited so many people. You know, we talk about these plans. Uh, trading strategies, how you can apply your strategy, achieve this plan, eh? and everything looked, you know, everything looked so good. It looked promising, you know, everything looked like it was moving in the right direction. Eh? And, yeah, so what happens is, you know, some people see that, you know, if I was supposed to be making $20 every week, yeah, when the guy sees that, you know, I made, I made about uh, $15 today, that means at the end of the week, I'll be having about uh, seventy-five dollars eh, from this same kind of strategy, so they will see that you know that twenty dollars that they're supposed to make is very small compared to what they are capable of making. Eh? And yeah, so the thing is, eh, if you have a plan like that, eh, uh, plans that I shared, eh, if you've made your own, or you know, many people make trading plans, eh, so you can stick to eh, you know, you should have a target every day. If your target uh, if your target for the week is 20, then aim for the 20. If you make more, more well and good. Eh? But if you make 100 this week, uh, next week, you know, aim for the percentage that you're supposed to get. Eh? Because sometimes the market is good, sometimes it is bad. Eh? So when the market is bad, still you'll make a little less money. Do not force it. Eh? So uh, just always make sure you hit the target or you make sure you exhaust your... You know, you exhaust your abilities. So you shouldn't just, um, you know, keep on, um, you know, trying to force it. Eh? Yeah, don't try to make what you made yesterday because it was so much, and you think that what happened yesterday is the same thing that is going to happen today. Yeah. So, uh, you know, by doing that, so some people blow up there. You know, the lot size. Eh? You know, if you've been using 0 0.01, you now shift it eh, to 0 0.07 eh? or 0 0.1 eh? or 0 0.15, eh? so that you make more money uh, based on what you are doing eh? so yeah so by doing that you know things might go bad for you another another reason why i made it a weekly plan is uh, if you enter a trade on monday every monday and yeah normally on a monday people are very skeptical of the market because you know the market has just come out of the weekend eh? you know these markets don't really close on the weekends eh? they keep on running then on monday you find it where it has reached eh? you just have a some kind of amnesia you have some you know you have you have a gap in between there that you weren't actually seeing when the market was moving over the weekend so on monday when the markets open you just want to you know sometimes you just want to get in other people are skeptical which is good eh? because if you're not skeptical about mondays eh? you know things can really turn out bad for you but if the market is in a good flow then you can go for it eh? so uh, if you open a trade on a Monday, and this is a bad trade, uh, you might not need to close it immediately. Eh? You know that you can leave it for the whole, you know, for about a few days. Eh? Maybe you check on it on, the, on Tuesday, Wednesday, 
yeah, so that uh, maybe on Thursday you'll make a profit out of that trade eh? if it was if it was a retracement that uh, caught you on the bad side. Eh? So if you're going to open a trade on Monday, then you can wait for it. Uh, it's not a must to close all your trades every day and open new trades the following day. If you have a bad trade today, then you you know you stay with it. Eh? You know, in, in the whole of your trading life, you can't have Run, eh? At least once in a while, you'll have a trade that will really spend so much time uh, when it's open eh? in some negatives before it gives you a positive that you're looking for. So if you're trading and um, you open your trades on Monday and you're following this weekly plan, then you can also make your profit by Friday just by waiting for that trade to come out of a loss. Eh? And yeah, so if you do that, then you know it, it will fulfill the weekly plan. Eh? Yeah, the whole idea of closing trades every day and opening other trades, now that is like a scalping strategy for for a year or for a month. Eh? So you can have uh, many trades that you know you can open and close, and you can add up your you know you can add up your profits or your losses at the end of the week, and you do a review. Yeah, so for the monthly plan, you know you do your review after a month or maybe two months, and you know you know how you're performing. Eh? So uh, don't. Uh, don't close trades out of fear. Yeah, do more analysis. You trade on Monday, and you don't have profit by Friday. Then um, you know analyze frame by time frame by time frame. Yeah, I've been looking at the Euro USD because uh, so many people open trades back when the market was at the top, and now it is uh, you know it's really going down. Eh? But in a big time frame, it looked down, but there's some kind of uh, a bullish kind of movement eh? so uh, you know that might be something favorable at the moment that uh, you can see London is still moving somehow bullish then we can look at what's happening in America and what's happening in Europe and we compare and see how to you know see how the market is going to move fundamentally in the future then we can see how to uh, maybe you can close your trades or you can wait for the market to still push up for some time. You can look for some good resistance points that can determine when it is safe to make a reasonable loss eh, if you're in a bad trade eh, uh, with the Euro USD. Eh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I was supposed to show you some charts today, but uh, yeah, I'm still working on that. Eh. I'm going to get some, you know, I'll be showing you those charts, eh, I think, next week. Yeah, And yeah, in the coming weeks, uh, yeah, the program will transfer from 2 p.m. to 10 a.m. And yeah, so I won't be just doing only the, you know, the Forex market. Um, these are things that I've been doing. Eh? Yeah, so we're going to go into stock, you know, starting from our own stock. Yeah, our own uh, in Uganda, we shall look at uh, Kenya, Tanzania, you know, East Africa. Yeah, maybe also the West African stocks. But... Uh, okay, normally the stocks that we really have access to, eh? yeah, right now uh, we have access to our own stock. Uh, I think we can buy stock in Kenya and in Tanzania. Yeah, so we can buy stock from our neighboring countries. And uh, through the internet, we can also buy stock uh, of uh, international companies eh, like Microsoft and so on. Right? Yeah, even on MetaTrader 4, you can also buy that stock. But now it is more than clear that anyone even people who are not uh, traders eh, on meta trader 4 you can also buy stock eh, at very good prices and you know these prices can actually uh, give you some good profit eh? there you can make some good profit from these prices that are there that are favorable for uh, maybe the, the common uganda eh? the money that we can afford yeah so you can invest in that, that international stock then uh, you can make some profit maybe in a month or you know when the country actually appreciates eh? So, uh, yeah, benefit everyone shall be analyzing all those stocks, eh? you know, from Microsoft to Amazon to Apple to, you know, uh, Google. Yeah? So, we shall look at all those stocks and analyze them, eh? you know, fundamentally and uh, technically. Eh? I think for, for the stock market, there is, uh, you know, there's too much fundamental. Eh? You have to really know what's happening in those countries. Eh? So, it's going to be very... Yeah, it's going to be very interesting for me <laughs> yeah, and for all of you. Eh? Yeah? But, you know I, you know, I like reading all those things. Eh? So, 
uh, you know, getting some information about all these companies and which ones are actually performing well, yeah, it will be good advice, it will be good uh, information uh, for you to use, eh? you know, to buy stock of whatever company that uh, that is available on the platforms that we have. Eh? Yeah, another thing will be cryptocurrency. You can now buy cryptocurrency easily eh? without going through uh, the crypto you know, crypto sharks, eh? it's what they're commonly called, eh? you know, the sharks. Eh? Guys who called me and told me eh, we, there's a silver package, there's a gold package, there is a bronze package, eh? there is a diamond package, you know, bring a hundred million for this, eh, bring 75 or 50 or whatever, yeah, and you know, they tell you to invest there and then, you know, things are going to move in your, f yeah, so uh, you don't really have to go through third parties to invest in cryptocurrencies, um, it's an option, eh? it's an option, it's sort of a must that if you want to buy um, any cryptocurrency, you have to go through a third party, eh? Yeah, so normally for the financial markets, there are normally two parties involved. And the first one is the market. The second one is you. Yeah, so you have your account and you're the one who is making the purchase. You're the one who is doing the trading. So those are two parties. So the third party is now another person, eh? you know, an account manager, a company, or anyone else who you will seek help from to help you invest eh? in any of these uh, instruments. Eh? So... Yeah, so to buy cryptocurrency, you can do it. Anyone can now access cryptocurrency. You can buy. So we shall also be looking at, uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin. Yeah, I think there are now very few cryptocurrencies that are internationally traded. Others are, others are a bit uh, more private. Eh? They are not really, I uh, you know the charts that make it uh, to these financial markets, eh? They are heavily regulated and they are very transparent. If you want to be listed on the stock market, uh, you need to, you know, you, you need to give, <laughs> you need to undress <laughs> for, you need to undress for the authority and tell them, yeah, I have so many employees like this. Eh, I pay them like this. Eh, my guys are actually qualified. I did not bring in relatives. Eh. Yeah, so maybe uh, these are their academic, you know, whatever. If they don't have papers, then they must have some kind of uh, something to back up eh, that they really deserve to be in that job. Eh? Yeah? So the purpose for all that is to ensure that uh, uh, the company doesn't just keep on uh, falling. Eh? You don't need to have market crashes every now and then because some guy just went to the bank and carried out half of the company's money and you know disappeared you know, just because he's somehow related to the owners yeah, so having all those things uh, in place having all that company ensures that when people invest in your stock there will be some stable movement eh? you know they want to ensure that you know everything on your site is in perfect place so that your stock price do not just move anyhow eh, without any explanation eh? yeah, some companies have scandal after scandal after scandal every time there's a scandal their market price drops, eh? and you know, so having stability ensures that uh, the price of your shares remains, uh, you know, it remains a bit constant. Eh? You know, some other factors and uh, some other factors can totally eh, can totally wipe out your <laughs> the price of your shares. Eh? For example, if your if your entire company is based on a warehouse eh, where you have so much uh, equipment and all that, and then a flood comes and sweeps it away. You know, yeah. Uh, your company doesn't say, you know, you're a disaster. If you didn't have insurance, then, you know, if your company was worth uh, maybe one billion and of all that one billion, about 800 million was in that, eh, in that warehouse eh, and it swept away eh, and things disappear. Uh, then, you know, your company has lost all that much. Eh, it has lost about 80% of its worth. Yeah, and also 80% of your stock will disappear. Yeah, that's how you have a crash, a market crash, yeah, you know. And those are very common. Yeah. Those which are not common are those rising, yeah, that, that rise, yeah, especially in the stock market. Yeah. Yeah, for a boom like that, yeah, like today the price is here, then tomorrow there is a sharp rise. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you're like, um, yeah, maybe if you're like maybe a construction company and, you know, you have listed your company, on the stock exchange, eh? and people come to make roads, eh? and you know you get a you get contracts to do all the roads, eh? <laughs> and you know that can 
simple thing. Yeah. And you know, yeah, so just like that, you can have a, you can have some kind of a spike. Eh? But anyway, uh, companies which are re- heavily regulated and very transparent are normally listed on the stock exchange. And because they are transparent, there is a lot of information that we can access from these companies, eh? you know, uh, monthly returns and, you know, turnover, whatever, all that stuff. All their, all their accounting data is normally there. This is how we performed last month. Now this is how we are performing this month. Um, you know, we are paying employees this month. Last time, now we are, you know, we are paying this much. This time, uh, we are shifting money to operations here to boost this other branch or whatever. So that kind of information really helps you to know how a company is progressing. Yeah? And you know, having this information from all of our companies here in Uganda will help us uh, to determine where to invest, yeah? to determine which stock we are going to buy. Uh, you don't want to just buy stock because yeah, because this company can advertise, eh? you know, everywhere you look, they're advertising, eh? which means, you know, they have good stock. Eh? Ah, ah, no, you have, to, you have to see how the company is progressing. Eh? You know, you might, buy, you might buy stock in a very, you know, in a giant company and, yeah, you know, uh, and it may not really rise eh, as much as you expect it. But if you buy stock in a small company and, you know, you switch up for that company, it's really going to grow. Then the price of your shares is also going to grow with that company. Now, maybe because it is still young and very innovative and whatever. So, uh, you know, that, so that helps you to know where to invest. Eh? And, yeah, the old way of doing things was, you know, putting money into uh, stock eh? and then you earn dividends. Eh? So that one still works. Eh? But that works for people who have a lot of money. Yeah? A lot of money you need. Uh, you know, if you're going to make, like, in dividends, eh? okay, it depends eh, on which company it is. But if you're going to make like, um, okay, let's put it very, very high. Eh? If you're going to make 50% eh, from your, okay, that is too high. Maybe 30, okay, 20% yeah, from, your, uh, from your total investment. If, you're, if your boat stock worth um, 100 million and you're going to make 20% every time they pay out, yeah, or maybe every year. So you can put it at a year, maybe one year. So there, you're going to be earning about 20 million every year, which is good. Eh? That's very good. Eh? But if you put there, if you put there 10k, yeah, you're going to earn, you're going to earn about uh, 2k yeah? <laughs> every yeah, every year. Yeah? So uh, yeah, so the people who invest in stock, where they come together, yeah, you can be a class eh, in university. Eh? It's normally done by university students. The whole class. Uh, you know, some guy, maybe the, I don't know if you knew, university, they are class money. <laughs> yeah, at some point when you've left school, eh, you look at the university like as if it's still a high school. Eh? So you, you, know, you start trying to figure out, well, they are prefects. Eh? Back at university, well, they are, I remember like they are prefects eh? or class monitors. Eh? But anyway, so you can, uh, you know, many people in universities, they always have a meeting. And, you know, someone goes in front of the class and starts saying, you know what, if you buy stock in this company, we're going to be earning big, but, you know, you can invest however little we have. We can bring 10k, 20k, 30k, you know, we're about uh, so many people we can raise up to about uh, 30 million. So let us put it there. And, you know, we, you know, we stay together for 10 years and see how to, yeah, to benefit from that. So that is a... Uh, yeah, that is something very good. Eh? That's something very good to do. Uh, if you're not doing it already, then uh, one of you in your university class, you know, you should go up in front of the classroom and <laughs> you, eh, you exercise speaking skills eh? and you tell people to start investing in stock. Eh? Eh, you, can co- you, know, you can combine your money and then you invest and, and uh, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a group. Eh? Yeah, so you invest and then, you know, maybe you can register in one person's name, uh, which might not be very, you know, might not be very wise. Eh? But uh, you form some kind of an association, a group or whatever, and then you put all your money in that basket. And then, you know, you start reviewing, uh, you start reviewing every, every now and then. Eh? You start seeing what's happening in that company and you say how to, uh, how, you, how, how you're going to move your money maybe from one company to another. And, yeah, by doing that, you can learn so much about the financial markets and how to benefit from all of these markets. Eh? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that also helps you to keep tabs eh, on these companies. 
as you know as a group yeah? so every time someone will be seeing something they'll tell you that you know what these guys have opened a branch here I've opened another branch here. Maybe this branch is not doing well. I went there. You know, when you've bought stock in a company, you can really feel the need to walk into these branches that they opened. Eh? To see, you know, you start feeling, start feeling for your money. Eh? Start, yeah? That's why they have to be very transparent. Eh? You, can't be, uh, you can't be holding on information when people have actually invested in your company. You owe them a right to information. Eh? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so many companies actually do that. Eh? They actually give out their information and you can access all this information maybe from their websites, uh, maybe from just going into the company. You know, sometimes when you go like uh, to these banks, eh, they have these posters that have been put in the banking hall and they're financial data of how they are performing. And yeah, that data can help you to make some good um, analysis of how the company is performing. And if you don't sell, you can buy and maybe you can benefit in the future. Yeah? So you can do that for every other that is out there. And you can, you, know, you can make an informed decision, especially when you're shifting your money from one company to another. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so in that same way, um, you know, that is how forex trading um, fundamental analysis is. Eh? And that's why there's an economic calendar for it. It's very easy. Yeah, forex trading is quite easy eh, because the market is so big. Eh? Yeah, so because of the economic calendars there, every country wants to, every country has to show you what's happening uh, in their nation. Eh? They have to uh, show you the consumer price index, they have to show you the unemployment rates. Yeah? America has um, unemployment claims. Eh? You know, that one is something that uh, many countries do not announce. Eh? How many people are claiming to be unemployed, yeah? those are people who go to, the, to those, uh, the, those unemployment centers that you see uh, on the news yeah? and in some movies. Yeah? Yeah, so the unemployment centers where people go and say they're unemployed, yeah? they claim that they're unemployed and then you know, they look after them yeah? so they don't become homeless or become criminals or whatever. So if, the, you know, if those unemployment claims go up, uh, you know, that is very bad yeah, for the country because they have to pay these people either way. Yeah? So uh, yeah, so they also have employment rates eh, for America. This is very important, eh? employment eh, in America. That's why you have NFPs and all those events that seriously affect that chart. Eh? Yeah, of all the events that happen in America, the things that they show, employment, I think, is uh, it's number one eh, on giving you some heavy market impact. Eh? Yeah, for some other countries, it might be interest rate decisions, I think, like uh, Britain, and Europe, yeah, interest rate yeah, from the, the national banks. Yeah. So those ones, they are really affect those guys. Uh, Japan, it is mostly... It's also in the... Okay, Japan is uh, it's on the other side of the world. Yeah, I think in all those charts, yeah, the charts of Japan are the most unique yeah, because, you know, somehow Australia and New Zealand are connected to Britain. Yeah, somehow, you know, the things that happen there, it's like they're in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, they're all these other countries, Canada, America, the whole of Europe, uh, Britain, they're all on this side. So they have very many similarities. But Japan, yeah, Japan is quite, Japan is quite unique. Yeah? And, you know, they normally have some, we have some good uh, fundamental analysis. Eh? There's some good events from Japan on the economic calendar. Eh? But uh, personally, I go there, eh? I really, the problem with Japanese website, is that in Japanese <laughs> and yeah, Google Translate really does okay does a good job eh? but anyway reading all those things is quite uh, it's quite informative about what's happening in Japan eh? there are so many things that happen in Japan besides uh, manufacturing and exports and what you know, there are so many things in Japan that really dictate um, the, the flow of their economy so uh, knowing all those things uh, is really really useful eh? yeah, it can help you understand those uh, those market movements eh, in those Japan charts that just don't make sense. Eh? You can have spikes happening at odd hours eh, when there is nothing eh, pointing to it. But and everyone knows a spike is caused by uh, something fundamental. So you just have to every time a spike happens on the Japanese chart, uh, you know you start looking for data eh, on the internet. You look for some information, something that occurred 
at that particular time that you had that spike eh? and that will give you a good uh, that will give you a good insight into what caused that spike and where to find some relative information affecting uh, Japan eh? yeah so you can do that for Mexico we have charts for Mexico yeah Mexico charts uh, really have fundamental analysis eh? yeah Mex Mexico is you know it's very it's a very unique country eh? so there is Mexico no way the Norwegian crone, eh? that one is another chart that really needs uh, some looking into. Eh? Then, um, yeah, also the South African run, eh? so also looking into the South African run on many economic countries, many find those countries there. But, uh, and I put one on BVB to FX, eh? which is very detailed. You can find charts of uh, South Africa, of Korea. Brazil, Mexico, even India, yeah, you can find uh, all countries there with their, you know, with their economic events eh, being announced, eh, all the way interest rate decision, uh, you know, unemployment rates, you might not find them there, but you might find some, you might find consumer price in, you might find the GDP, eh? GDP is very common, you can find that one there, and if you don't have market impact on your economic calendar, just know that uh, events that are uh, year on year are very, very strong, eh? Stronger than month uh, on month, so the monthly events are quite they are significant. They might have medium impact, or they might have uh, low impact. Eh? But year on year, normally has uh, its most high impact and maybe medium impact. Even if it has low impact, if if an event is year on year, it, uh, that is Y O Y. There is M O M and Y O Y. So there's also quarterly. Yeah? <laughs> every quarter which is QOQ so if you have all those there you know the bigger the time frame the more impactful um, the event eh? you know if you're comparing the G per country from last month to this month yeah that will have you know to show you where the country is headed eh? but if it is comparing last year and this year that will fundamentally show you how the country is performing eh? so those are year on year quite uh, very very important to keep an eye out for even if the calendar shows you that uh, and you know for these calendars here they have the events all the time which is very very good but the market impact is normally been their own analysts eh? so you might find in some calendars you have high impact in an event and on another calendar you'd have high impact eh? but now just take it seriously you know based on the time frame eh? you know many times analysts get this thing wrong eh? Like NFPs, eh? you know, for the last many months, eh? NFPs you always have a consensus which is uh, so different from the actual figure. You're expecting something to double, yeah? like you expect the figures of the NFPs to double, but then you have of what was there, and then the market totally hammers you eh? because you entered. Eh? So, uh, yeah, so sometimes analysts will uh, they will also do their best eh, to get the best data. But, uh, you know, what the government tells you is exactly what on ground. So you have to, that one is the one that impacts, uh, that one totally impacts that chart. Eh? So uh, what you have to do is uh, keep it in mind that uh, year on year is, will have a very high impact. Uh, then quarter on quarter, QOQ will also have very good impact. Then month on month, will have medium or low impact. Eh? But, you know, for NFPs, it's always is month month so nfps that is something to do with corporate jobs eh? in america you know, employment is very important there yeah, you can even see on a monthly basis eh? that comparison is very very strong there so uh that one you should take it seriously yeah but then for the other things that you know they don't really yeah, don't normally wait for them eh? though you wait uh, keep it in mind that the bigger the time frame the more impactful it will be eh? and you know that will really help you in doing your analysis eh? So, uh, you know, thank you for watching today. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.